Okay, I'm going to try my best to follow that extremely informative discussion with something a lot lighter and fluffier, which is my experience uh, working for the IJF, the Investigative Journalism Foundation. Um, during my internship, which was facilitated in part by Humber Story Lab, so shout out to you, David. Um, a large part of that internship was helping to build the IGF's procurement database. So I'll be touching on that a little bit, uh, a little briefly, um, but I want to kind of get into what else I accomplished during my internship, which um, was primarily reporting and writing stories. So I'm just gonna touch on those a little bit today. First, a little bit about me. I started at the IJF as an intern uh, earlier this year in April. Um, and as an intern, I was primarily a reporter. So I was writing stories and collaborating on stories. As an employee, like any good NPO worker, I wear multiple hats and do multiple things. Uh, I'm still doing reporting, but I'm also doing in, uh, audience engagement and KPI and database maintenance of our award-winning database open by default, which if you have any questions about, please feel free to reach out to me um, after the talks have ended and I'm happy to rant about what we do. Um, aside from this, in the last couple months, I helped uh, build the IGS procurement database, which I'll get into in a little bit. These are some stories that I worked on during my internship. Uh, the first one was about a week after I started and two senior reporters took me under their wing and were uh, extremely patient with me while I was learning to be a journalist for the first time ever. So that was really cool. Uh, we looked into some comments made by Polyev saying that he hates lobbyists and we kind of disproved what he was saying, which was really interesting. And it was a fun way to get thrown into a newsroom. Uh, my second story was talking about um, Humber's international um, student cap responses um, in which they uh, closed one of our, one of the programs that I was a part of actually um, in the previous months. Uh, so that was kind of a scoop story. Uh, and then I did a data kind of driven story on comparing Toronto's vacancy home tax with that of France's. So comparing the new versus the old, which is uh, a pretty popular angle we like to take at the IJF. Um, and then we did a really, really cool story collaborating with some people on our tech team, uh, talking about Canada's uh, party leaders and how they're connected to lobbyists. So we made a bit of a scrolly telling uh, presentation just showing all of those connections because there are so many of them. So we did that for, um, for Singh, Trudeau and Polyev. Um, I also did a bit of a social justice piece on uh, low income renters and how they are affected by extreme heat because they're arguably the most affected demographic. Uh, and then a really, really fun story which actually came out of our procurement research, uh, looking at the government's strangest purchases, which included, as you can see, 5.7 tons of cheese. A little bit about our procurement database, uh, which I was one of many hands on uh, in the past four months or so. Um, we present procurement documents at a federal and uh, provincial level. Right now we're just focusing on BC, um, but we present tenders, awards and documents um, and a lot of our documents are actually uh, searchable. You can just command F and look for some key phrases. So that's been really, really helpful in uh, my reporting and a lot of the reporting of my colleagues. Um, this makes a lot of procurement ATIP files immediately accessible, which is really cool. Um, and that's, we're building off of our open by default database for that. Um, and this is just one of 11 databases. So we have a lot of information out there and I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, this image here is actually from the homepage of our website. My colleague worked tirelessly to put together an interesting widget to um, allow users to just scroll through all of our different databases and see who's getting the most money and just keep an eye on the sheer amount of money that is going to these companies. My role in the building process was quite small, um, but it was still very important, and that was standardizing um, different pieces of information as they came into our database. Uh, I helped to standardize a bunch of different instances as uh, information flowed in and just see 
what makes sense, what doesn't, look for typos, look for uh, joint ventures, see what goes where. Um, and again, that was very much learning on the spot and learning by experience. This is the machine that we used that was developed by one of our really, really talented web developers. Um, and it was super fun. I was part of probably 20 people who worked on this and um, it was an all hands project for sure.